Hello everybody, Shelly here. And yes, I have glasses, which means I have ring light reflections. I'm sorry. If you are new here, hi, I'm Shelly. I don't normally do videos wearing glasses. I don't know where to put my head so you can't see the lights. Okay. However, I had a request recently. Then the comment was, there's just not a lot of real people, aka not professional makeup artists, that are doing videos with glasses. So I thought, why not do a little storytelling. Why not imagine you get up, you're either running a little bit late and don't have time to put on your contacts, or you know that you're going to be staring at a computer screen all day. It's still a professional environment. You still want to look a little polished. You feel a little bit more awake when you've got makeup on. So you go to work with something very fast, very easy. Now you get home from work and your husband who forgot to tell you the schedule says, Hey, can you be ready to go in like five minutes? We got to get out of here. What, going where? Well, we've got a retirement party for somebody at work. I said, we'd meet them all down at the pub. Let's go. You were dressed appropriately enough where you've got a sort of day to nighttime dress, but then you've got a doctor up the eyeshadow, but you're still wearing your glasses and you don't want to take the time to do it. This video is going to show you three daytime looks and then transferring those three daytime looks into three nighttime looks using the same palettes for that day. I hope this is interesting to you guys. Again, this is kind of by request. If there's a need for more requested videos, you guys feel free to leave me a comment and let me know what you'd like to know. And I give you some of my thoughts on some great wearing glasses palettes. Some more of my thoughts and theories behind wearing makeup with glasses from a lady of a certain age. And now this is not a video for everybody. I'm going to tell you guys right now, if you are somebody who does crazy, bold, colorful eyeshadow and you wear glasses and your quirky personality and your environment of work is very much uh, appropriate for that, this is not a video for you. This video is for somebody who maybe has a little bit more of a corporate or professional environment or just wants something fast and easy to look a little bit more polished without being so overly creative. Either way, it's okay. So if this interests you guys, please stay tuned and yeah, let's get into the video. It's a little challenging with the glare from the ring light. So I don't know how to make it go away, but we're going to try to get through this because I think there is some value in having ideas, thoughts behind wearing glasses and wearing eyeshadow because you can't, you can't do the same thing. You can't do the same thing when you don't have a heavy frame around you. How I wear my heavy rim glasses may not be the same way as if someone's using a, a wireless frame or even just like a wired frame, like a really small glass and glass style and how it fits your face. And I know sometimes you can get the trendy ones and they're ginormous and I don't know. I have multiple pairs of glasses that I kind of change up just on my mood or what I'm wearing or whatever. But I thought I would kind of do this little conversation. Maybe we'll try on some different looks and I would just give you my thoughts on it in case it helps you guys at all. Now, the majority of times I wear glasses, it's because I'm going to work or I'm working from home. I grabbed a selection of palettes that are ones that I kind of reach for. It seems strange to have some palettes for glasses and some palettes for non. And so obviously if you have a much smaller collection than my crazy library, that's perfectly fine. I'm going to give you some kind of some thoughts on my sort of go-to and, and what I like out of them. And then we'll put together a couple different looks and just kind of see where they come from. One of my eyeglass wearing palettes is Urban Decay's Naked 3, full of neutrals. Some of these are a little bit more on the kind of plumier tone which is kind of fun. You've got a couple smokier shades down here, but I think in general, this is a very wearable palette. Now, somebody asked me the other day if you can wear shimmers when you wear glasses, and I think that's, you know, open for debate. I personally do because I like the idea of light and dark, but I'm very selective on where I put it, and I, I don't wear glitter if I'm going to wear glasses. It just isn't going to happen. This is kind of an, another sort of economical version. This is an e.l.f., the new Classics palette. But you've got some greens. Again, you've got some kind of the plumier colors. You've got a lot of neutrals in here. And I feel like this palette gives you a, a pretty good amount of versatility if you are someone who doesn't do crazy bold colors. If you're not going to do a bright yellow, a bright green, a bright blue, this is a great like everyday palette, both with glasses and without. In fact, it's the one I had to pull off my vanity because I've been wearing a lot lately. Tried and true, going Coconuts Colourpop again. This is kind of right in, right there with the 
e.l.f. price range. You've got nine neutrals and a few of them are shimmers or more of like a satin sequin type formula. And this is a great like everyday glass wearing palette. Baby Got Peach also by ColourPop. If you like a warmer toned look, this is a great palette. This one and the Going Coconuts palette. These actually do really well if you want like a warm day and more of a cool tone, but you're you're good with the not crazy, subtle. The only thing about the Baby Got Peach is this glitter in here is a white bother. I, I wouldn't I wouldn't use that at all. Maybe on your body if you need to throw some extra glitter somewhere. A new palette that's a little on the pricey side is the Wayne Goss palette. This one just came out here in the last, I don't know, month or so. You've got, you know, one kind of matte and then three other that are more on the shimmery, foily, metallic -y kind of side, and then this deep, deep color down here. If you're a minimalist and you have the funds, this is just a great like go-to work palette. It doesn't doesn't give you a whole lot of like craziness. It's something to just think about. Okay, and then going back over to kind of the more economical versions, these Elf Bite Size palettes. I just grabbed four of them that I would actually wear with glasses. Truffles, and Truffles is a little bit more cool toned. It's very similar, in my opinion, to the Wayne Goss palette. If you look at it, you've got kind of a similar color story. You've got a kind of a medium brown, you've got a black. I mean, obviously it's not exact. Cream and sugar, cream and sugar's nice. Just neutral, easy, very, very, very wearable. Some people might just say basic. We've got rose water here is another good one. If you like more of the pinkier, plumier colors. Carnival candy. I don't know why it makes that carnival candy, but that's carnival candy which again, you have some warmer colors, but then you've got that pop of blue if you wanna do something a little bit more unexpected or maybe even take it to date night. If you know you wanna spend a little bit more money, we've got some Natasha Denona ones that are also really good for eyeglasses. Um, the mini retro palette, I think it's a little bit more of a softer look. The mini glam, speaking of which, she's got a new glam palette and oh, I was so close to pre-ordering it, you guys. And then that $15 shipping fee from the Natasha Denona website, I just couldn't, I couldn't take a $65 palette, which was already kind of at the most of what I want to spend, and bump it up to $80 and be able to justify it in my mind. So I'll wait for Sephora to release it. I think they're going to do that maybe on Thursday. And then when that happens, I'll just try to get it with no shipping. Because I'm cheap like that, I guess. Okay, and then the other one is the mini nude palette. I thought it would be good to show you guys some... We've got some e.l.f. That's a price point that is... I mean, these little bite size, they're $3. And... A lot of them you can get on, you know, at your local drugstore. And if you can't, you can get them for $3 on their website. The Going Coconuts and the Baby Got Peach. I think these are, I don't know, 12 16 bucks, something like that, off of ColourPop. You can also get them usually at, like, Ulta. The Natasha Denona ones. I have been known to get a couple of these at uh, during the holiday time and for, like, half price. So if you can wait that long, then this is a fantastic formula, nice, high quality. I don't have any complaints about these little Natasha Denona palettes. This one, the Wayne Goss one, you know, for the price, I think I was originally kind of surprised at how much you have to work to build up the colors, which made it hard for me to reach for. However, when you know that his intended audience of this was ladies of a certain age, and to be able to have kind of a universal palette that we could all use, this now all of a sudden becomes a very, very viable option for glasses. And then of course the Urban Decay one, I mean, who doesn't love the Naked palettes? If you want like a subtle, soft wash of color, the Naked palettes are really kind of, sort of like a go-to. If you wear glasses, and you're a lady of a certain age, you have to hydrate the crap out of your under eyes. If this is not moisturized, if this is cakey with too much concealer or too much something, too much powder, anything like that, it's just gonna make you look older and tired, my opinion. Keep the harsh lines away from it and the black liquid liner underneath your lashes. Of course, I know you guys aren't doing this because you guys are watching lots of other beauty YouTubers not just me. Aside from a good uh, a good moisturizer and avoiding the harsh lines, I sometimes when I wear glasses don't really put much of anything. Maybe I'll smoke out a little bit of um, a complimentary eyeshadow, so we'll do that here. The A really, really great moisturizer, and you guys see me this. I don't know if it's Wellita or Walita, however it said, but this skin food, you can literally use this on any part of your body that is dry. I've used this under my eyes, like between when I do like three looks with one palette, I'll use this, kind of dab it underneath there. Highly recommend that. And then these are two other options. Again, we've got more of an affordable, this is an e.l.f. I think it's an under eye primer. 
And then we also have the Becca, which is an under eye brightening corrector. The Becca one I feel is has a little bit more full coverage. I actually have that under this eye right now and I've got the e.l.f. under this one. Just to kind of compare and contrast and, and sort of see, I feel like the emollientness of them both, if that is a word, are very similar, but this one feels slightly heavier, slightly more coverage, and it's slightly lighter. So when I go put it on, it's, you know, it's great that it gives you a little bit of coverage, but you gotta be careful not going too, too light under here because you don't want to draw attention to it, right? I mean, you want brightening, but you don't want to be like, hey, now we're wrinkled, but we're a lighter color because that just looks ashy or crazy or whatever else. I'm actually going to just start with the Wayne Goss, and I do have a video using this palette. I would say this is a great palette for, for glass wearers if you want just neutral, quick, everyday, no fuss, easy to blend really designed for ladies of a certain age. I'm going into this, the, really the only matte in here. Well, I guess the black is a matte too. There's two mattes out of these six shades, but I'm gonna use the brown matte. Key to eyeshadow with glasses is to keep it subtle and to go lighter than you think you need because oftentimes the glasses sort of frame and enhance what you've got going on. And so you gotta be careful about what you've got going on. I've got a meeting, I'm wearing glasses. I wanna be taken seriously. I'm gonna use this shade right here, which I believe is 02. And we're just gonna pack this all over the movable eyelid. You guys, this is so easy and so fast. And if you're going back to work and you wear glasses, this is a fantastic, slightly subtle shimmer that is not gonna give you any kind of creepiness. I use that all over my movable lid and kind of buffed it into and just slightly over the top of that darker transition shade. And that might be the majority of color. Now, if I do have a little bit of darkness in through here or I wanna look a little bit more awake, I'm gonna grab the lightest shade and we're just gonna pop a little bit of that right here. This gets me work. Now, obviously I, I would put on a little bit of mascara probably will put in a little bit of eyeliner actually. So I'm gonna grab more of a rust colored and I'm just gonna darken up my lash line ever so softly, both top and just a little bit on the bottom. And I like this shade to do that because it's not an obvious eyeliner. But for me, I would go a little bit more subtle for a workplace environment which means I would probably use something like the Wonder Beauty Mile High Club, a little bit more of a subtle mascara. And I am doing a little bit on the bottom and a little bit on the top. And I'm wearing glasses wearing mascara. I want a little bit of separation, and I don't know if you can even tell. What if I turn off this light? I don't know that that makes any difference if I turn off the ring light or turn it down significantly, if you can even really tell. I feel this is like very subtle. Anyway, you guys, that would be work, lo work look number one with glasses for daytime, probably what I'm gonna wear, something very, very neutral. Now, if you were going out after work, I would still grab this palette and I would go into the darkest shade in here, it's a black shade, and I would start right at my lash line. And again, I'm going right over the top of what I'm wearing because I'm going from work to somewhere else, somewhere more date night. And I'm just gonna pack this on. And yes, I am using kind of a crease brush here but once I get it on there a little bit, I'm gonna start working it up just a little bit and then I'll take a clean brush and kind of buff it out a little bit more. The shades really do blend well together into kind of almost like a watercolor sort of effect. And I'm gonna drag that down just a little bit down here. Okay, now that I have that on there, I'm gonna take a clean blending brush and we're just gonna buff this in a little bit. Now I'm gonna grab on my finger this topper down here in the corner this is kind of a weird formula. So I would put that topper right on my lid and we've still used nothing but neutrals. There's no way to show this with the ring light. You get a little bit more drama on this lid that I think is a nice transition from daytime to nighttime, from work to cocktails after work or dinner after work or date night or whatever else without having to go like, oh, I need to go home and put on my contacts, right? We're being more flexible here. So that is gonna be looks number one and two using the Wayne Goss, what does he call this? Imperial Topaz Luxury Eye Palette. I'm gonna start with that. I'm gonna take this off, come back, and we'll put on something a little bit more different. I did put the e.l.f. under eye balm. I'm gonna call it balm because I don't really feel like it's a concealer, but it is probably a primer. And then I use the Becca on this side again. And you can tell, like this one feels like it's brighter and lighter than this one. I don't know that that's necessarily a good thing. The Going Coconuts, I think, 
a lot of you guys have this one. It is also very brown. So we're going to skip that. And as much as I am scared to go into this Baby Got Peach, I might actually, just because I want to do something a little bit more on the warmer side, not everything, not everything is brown. Not all of our eye looks wearing glasses have to be brown. So in the Baby Got Peach palette, I'm going to use this first shade in here called Darlin' Crease. And then a little above. This palette is very light and very subtle for the most part, which is why I think it makes such a great glasses palette. It makes a really good palette for somebody who has super light fair, haired, fair skinned. I'm going to go in with this shade called Perky. It has a little bit more of a pink undertone to it, but I'm going to use that along my crease. We're just giving yourself, we're giving the optical illusion that your eyes are a little less hooded and a little bit more, a little bit more dimension. I don't think I've ever filmed with this palette before, but if I can find that I've got an old video on it, I'll go ahead and link it in here too. I don't think I have though. I don't think I've done three looks with this palette. If you'd like to see a non-glass, you know, three looks with one palette, well, just leave me a comment down below. I feel like this is just kind of a, an oldie but a goodie even though it's been out for what like a year okay and then i'm going to use the darkest shade in here called half baked i'm going to use that on my outer corner and just a little bit down below to kind of i want to i'm not going to go all the way up as high as i would it's just meant to kind of darken up that lash line and give you a little bit of definition around the eye because again this is our daytime or our work look not daytime fun look. We're not going to the farmer's market. We're, we're just going to work. For work, I would probably go in with Glaze It all over the lid. It's not a super bold color, but it's not stark either. And the idea is really we're playing with optical illusions, right? And the only thing I might do is take a little bit of a brown eyeliner and just tight line right up against those lashes just on the outside, nothing too crazy, no big wing, nothing beautiful like that. And if you find that your line is too big or a little harsh, then just take your brush and smudge it a little bit. Look at me sounding all like a makeup artist here. And then we're gonna go again with our little subtle Wonder Beauty Mile High Club mascara. It feels like it's been so long since I've done a video with glasses. And I think the reason why I don't do them is one, I didn't know if anybody actually found them useful. And number two, it's challenging with the ring light. Okay, this is soft and peachy. Nothing is too vibrant, but it still gives us the optical illusion. And I think because I kept everything clear down here and didn't go too crazy, like I didn't use the darkest, well, this palette doesn't really have a lot of dark colors, but I, I don't use like the darkest, blackest. We're not going super smoky for, for daytime. We're just not. I keep trying to figure out where I can put my head so that you know I start having lights. But that's what it looks like without the glasses on. Very clean, nothing too crazy. Now, how do we take this palette and take it a little bit more fun? Going out with girlfriends after work, I'm gonna take this brightest crazy pink in here called Centerfold. Not a color I use very often, and I'm gonna load up a brush and we're gonna go right over the top. This is what makes this ends up being a fun look. Bold, unexpected color, which sometimes looks a little fluorescent. And I would take this down below too. And because it's a, a lighter shade, I am going to go all the way across. It's not so saturated and heavy and dark that it's going to make my eyes look even smaller. It's just going to give it a little bit of attention. I'm going to use the color Get Even on my movable lid. And again, we're just putting it over the top of what I already have. But this color is beautiful. I love that kind of rose gold sort of look. I think this is probably the, the shade in this palette that actually helped it sell. In addition to using like super emollient, moisturizing under eye primers and things like that, if you can get away with not using any concealer, that would probably be in your best interest. If you do need coverage down there, go with something like uh, an e.l.f. BB cream or a foundation serum, something that's gonna give you just a little bit of coverage but still be really moisturizing. I think that's kind of the key here. Even if I were going out with girlfriends and with a bolder color like this, I'm gonna still use that brown and I'm just gonna tight line 
We'll do a little smudge. Throw up my eyes to have a little bit of definition. And now I'm just taking a brush and we're smudging it in that lash line a little bit. I don't want any harsh lines. So if you're someone who likes to wear glasses, but also wants to dabble in color and be a little bit more fun, and you're going from something like a work situation to something a little bit more fun, I think this is a nice way to kind of give yourself a little bit of personality, if you can see. You can use eyeshadow to give yourself a little personality without still overwhelming the glasses. I'm going to take this off. We're going to come back with one more, a little bit more of a plumier, pinker look. I hope that's okay. And that'll give us three different looks, obviously with three different palettes, but definitely ends up with like six different looks because you've got a work look and then you've got a date night look, all with glasses. It's kind of a fun little experiment, so I'll take this off. I'll be right back. I feel like I want to come back and do three looks with the uh, Naked 3. Maybe I'll do that with glasses and just do three different looks all with glasses. I'm going to use this bigger e.l.f. palette because I think that whether you're a glassware or not, I think you get a lot of options in here. And this is just kind of a fun palette to use. So I'm going to use, I'm going to start with the shade Charmer as my all over the lid shade. And I'm taking a fatter fluffier brush and I'm really trying to load up the bristles because I'm going to go, I'm going to cover a lot of real estate with this shade here. This is one of those shades that are super easy and I'm going pretty high. Do you guys have this palette? This is the new classics. If you guys are at all interested, I can do a video of like, here's my sort of go-to eye looks that I've been doing a lot lately. You know, the stuff that I use on a regular basis. I mean, it's it's one or the other. It's either inexpensive drugstore or it's like high-end bougie stuff that I really want to use because I invested the money in it. I want to save it just for filming days. So if you guys want to see a video, both of drugstore or more high-end looks that I've been playing with and just kind of using on a regular basis, let me know. Like I can pull up a video of like, here's my, you know, three or four four or five or whatever kind of go-to looks that I've been using just sort of on a regular basis. But I tend to be very monochromatic for work looks. I don't really contrast too many colors. I'm gonna use the color Earth on my crease. You guys, I ended up redoing my sort of work look a little bit more because I felt like it was so dark and heavy with that darker earth shade in the transition. I kind of wanted to just kind of back, come back in and kind of update you a little bit. Basically for taking this as a work look, I use Charmer all over my lid and just the littlest tiny bit of Cosmo just right in through here just to give it just the tiniest bit of light subtle on the mascara. That's all you need. You don't need any more than that for work. Yeah, if I were if I were going to work with this eyeshadow, that one soft, muted, dusty color and a little bit of little hint of lightness, that's all I would do. I think I'm going to yeah, I'm going to use this sort of gray color called it's like a brownish gray. I'm going to have to buff this out a lot, but I do want to, again, give that optical illusion of a deeper set crease. Once I've got that crease kind of drawn in there, and we're just going to buff that in so it's not so severe looking. I'm actually going to use the shade Cosmo. We're going to keep that pretty close to the lash line and towards the center of the eye because we don't want it to look frosty but we want the light. I love this palette for all the different functionality and in different combinations you can do. And I really like the fact that it's affordable. I'm going to go in with black cherry because I think this is a beautiful color on the outer third, smoking this shade up into the crease. We're going to just pack on it with a brush. We're going to drag a little bit down there to smoke it out and we'll just buff that top line a little bit too. Even though that shade is very, very dark and it's called Black Cherry, it reads as a shimmery purple color, but it's not. I'm going to take the shade Charmer and we're just going to buff it over that where that Black Cherry meets the movable lid. I'm going to take Cosmo again, but we're going to put it a little bit further on the lid now. Instead of keeping it all in the center, we're bringing them all the way out so pretty. So 
the question that I was asked is, can you wear shimmers with glasses? And maybe a professional would say something otherwise, but for somebody who wears glasses and likes the look of a lighter, brighter lid space, I would say yes, as long as you, of course I just crammed that in my eye. I would say yes, as long as you don't make it too frosty and pick a formula that's not gonna accentuate the crepiness. But as far as a light and dark and, and a shift, I love the way Charmer kind of peeks out up here at the top. It gives it that overall kind of more of a plummier shift to it. I'm gonna go in with the shade Muse, which is kind of like this, almost like a burgundy shade in here. We're gonna go right back over the top and smudge it all the way in. And again, even if I'm going to some sort of, you know, smoking hot date night, I'm probably not gonna do a harsh line with glasses. And this would give me my date night look on this side with glasses, using something slightly more, and of course now I have crap all over my glasses, but using colors that are slightly more pink undertoned. This side's uh, significantly more smokier than this side. Take that off. Here's the deal with eyeshadow. You do you. And if you make mistakes, that's okay. You just wash this off at the end of the day. So play with makeup. My recommendation with wearing glasses is to keep it lighter, keep it neutral. Don't go too heavy. In fact, if your eyelids support it, maybe don't even do any kind of eyeshadow. Maybe just the barest little bit of bronzer in the crease and some mascara. Maybe just the tiniest smudge of some sort of, you know, liner or something. That's okay. If you wear glasses, you don't have to go overboard. The beauty of wearing glasses is you can get in and out of the house pretty quickly. And then it's easy to transition to day night. So if there's anything I can say about being somebody who's literally worn glasses the majority of my life, keep it professional as much as you can for work and then have a little bit more fun after work. I hope this was interesting in some way. My glasses are so dirty right now. I hope this was interesting. I hope you guys got some I guess some ideas. If you're doing all this and this is old news and old hat, then fantastic. This is, you're not the audience for this. The audience of this particular video, women who wear glasses that have to go to work, want to look professional, want to look polished, put together, but then also want to like transition to date night while still wearing glasses. That's kind of the idea behind this video. I think that there's not a lot of videos out there or are sharing kind of what they do with glasses. And again, it's so challenging to show you eyeshadow with the ring light. It's just, it is what it is. But this is absolutely a work look. This is absolutely a date night look. I've shown you six different looks. I hope that's fun in some way. And just want to let you guys know that I do listen to requests. So if you guys have a request or a need for something, let me know what it is. And we'll figure it out together. That's what sisters do, right? I'm wishing you guys much happiness. I hope you guys are having a fantastic weekend. I think this will probably go up on a Saturday morning. So just letting you guys know that I do tend to upload Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 3 p.m. Pacific time, but occasionally when I get a need for something or a request for something that's a little bit out of the ordinary, I'll throw up something on a weekend just to, I don't know, for something fun. I would love it if you guys subscribed. Yeah, leave me a comment down below. Feel free to follow me over on Instagram at Shelly Tsunami. Until my next video, bye for now.